Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about beta 2 microglobulin, lactic acid, lactate dehydrogenase, uric acid in the blood and in the urine, potassium in the blood and in the urine, chloride in the blood and in the urine. And in the last video, we talked about a very important topic, which is the renal vein renin assay. Why did we use the renal vein renin assay? To help us diagnose renal artery stenosis i.e. to establish that the cause of the hypertension is the narrow renal artery similarly cap to prel stimulation test can help you diagnose that the cause of the hypertension is the renal artery stenosis please watch the videos in this labs playlist in order especially the video on the plasma renin activity assay and the one on the renal vein renin assay Remember that renin comes from the kidney. We can consider it as an enzyme and as a hormone. Renin converts angiotensin O gen into angiotensin 1. And angiotensin O gen is a globulin. It's a plasma protein. Made by whom? By the liver. What's the main function of renin in life? To raise the blood pressure. Which means what's the most common trigger of renin release? low blood pressure which will lead to low kidney perfusion so low blood pressure will trigger renin release so that renin can raise the blood pressure back to normal renin which is a protein that comes from the kidney renal converts angiotensinogen coming from the liver into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 by angiotensin converting enzyme in the lungs is converted to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two functions. The first function is in the name angiotensin. I tense blood vessels. I constrict them. Why? To raise the blood pressure. Function number two, I talk to the adrenal cortex, to the zona glomerulosa to be specific, so that the zona glomerulosa can make aldosterone, so that aldosterone can reabsorb salt and water, which will help us raise the blood pressure back to normal. Let's review what we have said before. Plasma renin activity assay. What was the purpose of the test? To diagnose causes of secondary hypertension and to differentiate between primary hyperaldosteronism, where it starts in the adrenal cortex, versus secondary hyperaldosteronism, where the problem started somewhere else. As for the last video's topic, which is the renal vein renin assay, it is for renal artery stenosis. Stenosis means narrowing of my renal artery. And today's topic, the cap to prel stimulation test, is also to help us establish that the cause of the hypertension is the narrow renal artery. Some causes of renal artery stenosis. If I'm an old guy, atherosclerosis is number one. If I'm a young lady, fibromuscular dysplasia is very common. Regardless of the cause, if my renal artery is narrow, less blood will reach the kidney. The kidney will start to shout. Shout what? Profanities? No, it will shout out renin. Because the kidney is feeling that the blood pressure that reaches the kidney is low. From the kidney's perspective, the perfusion is low. So the kidney will shout out renin to try to raise the blood pressure, which can lead to hypertension. Since this hypertension has a cause, you call it secondary hypertension. But if you have no idea what's the cause, it's called primary hypertension. Most patients with renal artery stenosis have no idea that they have stenosis. They are asymptomatic. As for those who are symptomatic, they have hypertension, usually in the form of headache. You can listen with your stethoscope, and since the artery is narrow, the velocity of blood flow will go up, creating turbulence, which can be heard. It's called the bruit, or bruit in French. So I can hear bruit by my stethoscope. I can see the narrowing of the artery on ultrasound. However, just because the renal artery looks narrower on imaging, just because there is a bruit of my stethoscope, this does not necessarily mean that the patient's hypertension is caused by the renal artery stenosis. It could be caused by another disaster. So how can I tell then? This is the purpose of the renal vein renin assay, discussed in the last video, and the captoprel stimulation test with the plasma renin activity, which will be discussed right now. So why do we do this test? To distinguish between hypertension caused by renal artery stenosis versus hypertension due to anything else. How do you run the test? You inject a radio-opaque contrast dye into the inferior vena cava. Since this inferior vena cava is connected to the right renal vein and the left renal vein, 
the contrast will go here and will go here. Then you place two catheters, one in the right renal vein and the other in the left renal vein. You draw blood samples from the right renal vein and the left renal vein, and then you measure renin of the right kidney and renin of the left kidney because when the kidney shouts out the profanity known as renin the kidney secretes the renin into the renal vein and then we can compare and contrast between renin of the right kidney and renin of the left kidney if you see significant difference between them i.e the affected abnormal stenosed kidney i.e the one that has renal artery stenosis will have too much renin because it's sensing hypotension, it has low kidney perfusion, it will shout out more renin. However, the normal kidney is just dishing out the normal renin, which makes the abnormal kidney higher in renin than the normal kidney. When the ratio is greater than one and a half, this tells you that the patient's hypertension is actually caused by the renal artery stenosis. We have proven it because we have established that the affected kidney is affected too much, that it started dishing out too much renin. What's the next step for this patient? Renal arteriography. I gotta see how bad the narrowing is and this might require surgical intervention. But if there is no significant difference between the right kidney's renin and the left kidney's renin, then whatever you saw on ultrasound is not that significant from the patient's perspective, and whatever you heard with your stethoscope is not the cause of the hypertension, which means go fishing for other causes. Now, cap to pearl stimulation test used with the plasma renin activity assay. Why? To tell whether this hypertension is caused by renal artery stenosis, i.e. renovascular hypertension, or caused by something else. How do you perform the test? Step number one, measure the baseline plasma renin activity before you do anything else. All right, let's measure the renin then. And then what? Give the patient cap to prel, which is an ACE inhibitor. ACE inhibitor will inhibit ACE i.e. inhibit the angiotensin converting enzyme, which means inhibit the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2 will drop. Step 3. You re-measure the plasma renin. If you found that there is significant increase in renin between step 1 and step 3, i.e. renin is way higher in step 3 than it was in step 1, then this proves that the hypertension is caused by renal vascular disease, i.e. renal artery stenosis which means renovascular hypertension. Why is that? Because this kidney was already struggling before you performed any test, correct? Which means that this kidney was shouting profanities, I mean renin, before you started the test. Now, when you lower angiotensin 2, renin gets more upset because the purpose of renin is to raise angiotensin 2. When you lower angiotensin 2, this afflicted kidney will shout even more profanities and release more renin because it was struggling in the first place. You added a burden on the kidney, so the kidney will shout louder. But if the hypertension was not caused by the renal artery stenosis, then there is no significant difference between step one and step one. I did not say no difference. I said no significant difference. Back to the previous story. This injured kidney will shout louder. You know what's going to happen when a kidney with a narrow renal artery is crushed even more by an ACE inhibitor? Blood pressure will decrease even more than this patient. Because the only hope for this poor kidney was the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And you took the hope away. Quick review on the management of renal artery stenosis. Well, it depends. If it's just one side and less than 80% stenosis, it's medical management. This patient has high blood pressure, might benefit from ACE inhibitors. However, we do not give ACE inhibitors if we have bilateral renal artery stenosis. What if it's on one side only, but the narrowing is more than 80% of the diameter of the artery? Now we'll need an intervention, percutaneous transluminal ultrasound with or without a stent placement. This is not an open surgery. This can be done through the skin. However, if this fails, the next one is the open surgery. How does that work? Glad you asked. Here is the abdominal aorta, here is the narrow renal artery, and here is the affected kidney. You basically bypass the narrowing by connecting the aorta directly to the renal artery after the obstruction so that the kidney can have its normal perfusion, so that the kidney can stop shouting out the profanity known as renin 
which is the cause of the hypertension in this case, because I've verified this via the renal vein renin assay. If you want to learn more about vascular surgery, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, and many more surgical topics, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about the normal kidney function, the glomerular filtration rate, filtration fraction, the concept of renal clearance, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, etc., download my renal physiology course. What happens to the kidneys during pregnancy? What happens to creatinine? What happens to the blood urea nitrogen? What happens to the kidney function tests and why? What happens to the kidney in preeclampsia? How about severe preeclampsia? Learn more about all of these topics by downloading my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about cardiac pharmacology like ACE inhibitors, I have a separate course for that called Cardiac Pharmacology, also available on my website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my course. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.